Okay, today we're going to start looking at improving efficiency in amplifiers. And notably, we're going to start using what are called switching amplifiers. So why is efficiency poor in linear amplifiers? Well, the reason is there's always a non-zero average voltage and current at the transistor's output, uh, the drain or the collector of a MOS or a BJT, respectively. And this leads to DC power dissipation. So let's look at the waveforms for a class A amplifier. So this is what the drain voltage waveform would look like for a class A amplifier. Uh, it's swinging uh, between uh, it, with a bias at a DC value of VDD, which is the DC bias through an inductor. Uh, it can in principle swing up to twice VDD and all the way down close to ground. And you have to pretend that I can draw a sine wave. If we look at the current waveform, the current waveform has an average value of its maximum divided by 2, uh, and it's inverted relative to the voltage waveform. Now, we don't uh, necessarily know what the maximum current is uh, like we do what the maximum voltage is, uh, and the reason is this depends upon the GM of the transistor, so it's dependent upon the power cell itself. Here we can see that there's some average non-zero value for both of these waveforms uh, because they're offset by that DC bias. So we have that the DC power is equal to the average current times the average voltage, where it's equal to I max times VDD over 2. This is the case of a class A power amplifier. And if you recall, we can find uh, a similar, we would find a similar thing for a class B power amplifier. Now we've already found peak efficiency and uh, in uh, typical uh, 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 efficiency versus alpha power characteristics for the class A and class B amplifiers. We know that the class A amplifier has a peak efficiency of 50% and it rolls off something like that relative to alpha power. So this would just be the saturated alpha power for the PA. And we know that the class B amplifier has a peak efficiency of 78.5% pi over 4. And it rolls off linearly with power. Now, if we look at um, a modern communication waveform, such as, uh, say, an OFDM waveform, the uh, OFDM waveform, or any uh, modern communication waveform for the most part, has what we would call a probability density function with respect to its alpha power. So it has some statistical envelope over which it operates. And most modern power amplifiers rarely operate anywhere near their peak alpha power. Uh, they operate instead at, at what we would call an average alpha power. And the average is just dictated by finding the average of this PDF. We often, when we're talking about designing power amplifiers, talk about the PAPR, or peak to average power ratio, which is the difference in dB between the saturated alpha power and the average alpha power. So uh, to reiterate, our envelope PDF is defined as follows. So the envelope PDF is the probability that the output amplitude is at a given value at any uh, instant in time. And the peak to average power ratio, or PAPR, is the ratio of the peak power to the average power of a signal. So one thing that we can immediately see is that we design power amplifiers or power amplifiers achieve their peak efficiency at high output power and then their efficiency rolls off proportional to the uh, inversely proportional to the output power and we see that our communication signals likely have some peak average power ratio that makes it more likely that they're going to operate at a lower power rather than a higher power and so if we were to look at the average efficiency of a signal of an amplifier that's amplifying a signal with a large PAPR, you would see that the average efficiency would be quite a bit lower than the peak efficiency. And this is one of the prime challenges with linear amplifiers. So how are we going to try and increase the efficiency or the average efficiency? Or both? 
So we've already done this with the class B amplifier. We're going to minimize the time period where voltage and current overlap at the transistor output. With the class B amplifier, we did this by biasing the transistor so that it was uh, biased just at the edge of cutoff and only turned on for part of the uh, input wave uh, cycle. With a class E amplifier or any switching amplifier, what we're going to do is switch the transistor and use a pulse shaping network in order to minimize the overlap between the voltage and the current. So in general, we're going to try and shape the current pulses and voltage pulses so that they don't overlap. So let's just say that we had some pulse shaping network that transformed the output impedance uh, into something that at the drain caused the drain uh, current to look like this triangular waveform. And simultaneously, let's look at the Let's say that it half rectified our drain voltage waveform and delayed the waveform so that it was out of phase with the current waveform. And if we were to take the product of both of these two waveforms, ideally the product would be zero, which would mean that zero power would be dissipated uh, at the output of the transistor. And simultaneously, this pulse shaping network uh, should be a bandpass network so that it filters out all the weird harmonics that would come from these waveforms and leaves us with a sinusoid being driven into our out. And ideally, the sinusoid being driven into R out would have a period that was equal to roughly 1 over F0, uh, which is the input frequency that we're driving into this. Now, I noted that pulse shaping is done on linear power amplifiers, such as the class B and class J amplifier. And sometimes we're starting to see the term waveform engineering uh, for these uh, pulse shaping networks that are done in order to provide a specific shape of the drain current and drain voltage waveform. Uh, of our uh, that, that we uh, aim for on our transistors. Uh, specifically, uh, next we're going to start looking at the class E power amplifier, which is a specific type of power amplifier that was first proposed by uh, the SoCal uh, father and son duo uh, in JSSC in 1975. And this is a class of power amplifier that is known as zero voltage switching. Now, our zero voltage switching just imposes a few rules on the operation. And the first rule is that we're going to try and delay the rise in the drain voltage until the switch turns off completely. Our next rule is that the drain voltage must return to zero before the switch turns on. And finally, in order to make sure that we don't dissipate any power in the pulse shaping network, we're going to impose a rule that the drain voltage, the derivative of the drain voltage, must be equal to zero at the switch turn on. Now, in the next lecture, we'll start talking about the specific network that achieves uh, these three goals, um, and it is called the Class E network, and we will look at some of the unique properties of it.